Hello, and welcome to round two of the Parenting Roundabout podcast. I'm Terry Morrow, and I'm here with Catherine Haleko. Hello. Usually on this podcast, we talk about parenting issues, but once a week, Catherine and I like to get together to discuss TV, movies, books, and other entertainment topics because it's nice to talk about something other than parenting for a change. This week, we are continuing with our watch of the second season of Veronica Mars with two episodes from the second season, the 12th and 13th. The first one was called Rashad and Wallace Go to White Castle, and this is a continuation of the plot in which Wallace went to Chicago to be with his dad and apparently to save on the budget of Veronica Mars, and was gone for a while, and during that time was in a hit-and-run incident that uh, paralyzed a homeless man, and... uh, he was approached, I think, in the last episode we saw by a reporter allegedly wanting him to man up and tell his story. And when he did, apparently that was a signal to the folks back in Chicago that he was a traitor and a rat, and therefore they said he was the one who was driving. And now <gasps> Wallace might go to prison. So, But not if Veronica can help it. That's right. You know, if you're going to find yourself in that stupid position, never mind having a cop for a father. You want to have a girl detective <laughs> as your best friend. That's right. That is what will solve all the problems. A little kidnapping, a little phone theft, and you're good. Yeah, the uh, the whole idea that, like, if he could just talk to Richard, he could yeah. straighten this all out. <laughs> like, whoever thought that that was going to work? Oh, you're right. I should give up all this money and, you know, girls throwing themselves at me and, and go to jail for this thing that I did. I I didn't see it until now. Right. No. Now that you've shown he, me the light. Yeah, for sure. I didn't seem like he was the, uh, you know, brightest bulb in the scoreboard. So, um, <laughs> and pretty easily pushed around by just the most awful caricature of a sports well, it would be a sports parent, but it's a sports uncle who right. was, you know, guarding his career with every tooth and claw available to him. Yes. So, but was he powerful enough to override the appeal of Jackie? No, he was not. <laughs> And of course, I fell for this whole scheme. Yes. I was like, oh, Jackie, how could you? And mm-hmm. then, of course, she was duh, in on it. She was in on it, which I should have known. And then, of course, it turned out that uh, Chekhov's cop that works at a club and will let Veronica in finally yes. manifested by Jackie luring the, uh, you know, taking, not luring, just, just you know, pretty much ushering Richard over to this club and the uncle, of course, immediately pursuing him and taking Wallace's word for it, which seems sort of, shouldn't his defenses have been up at that point? I guess <laughs> since Wallace said it was his ex-girlfriend, he thought that, boy, is this this a hapless dude. <laughs> right. Um, got him over to the club. Veronica then just swiped his phone and got evidence on him tampering with a witness and all done. All's well All's that well. ends well for Wallace. Time for Wallace to play in the big game. Yes. So, and you know what? I don't care because I don't want Wallace to be in jeopardy. I am perfectly fine with it. And if mm-hmm. we are going to be made to include Jackie in the proceedings here, I would just as soon like her. Um, yes. You know, certainly th- th- these two episodes together were a good pair for the Jackie rehab duo that they are. Mm -hmm. Um, So you go from sort of, I mean, even at the beginning, you know, when she came to where Wallace and Veronica were having lunch and Wallace gave her such a cold shoulder, even then you felt a little bad for her. And then it seemed like she was, you know, betraying him by going with this guy. But then that quickly, they didn't, they didn't leave us with that deception for long. So I guess, I guess she's okay. (laughs) And, you know, now that, Mac is going off and making questionable choices with her life. We need a, another girl ally for Veronica. Right, for Veronica. <laughs> yes. um, but that's that's in the second episode. So what else happened? Anything else of interest in Richard and Wallace go to White Castle? Well, this was the one in which Veronica also bugged the confessional at the church, which, you know, it was handy that she was morally opposed to um audio yes uh surveillance because audio surveillance would not have captured the transfer of drugs within a hymnal true so yes 
she needed to to use video. And that is, it is correct that anybody can see who goes into a confessional. So that is possibly a little bit less bad, Mm -hmm. though. Still, I think, how how did she put it? She's done things that are not... uh, on the, up, on the up and up, up God wise. God wise, yes. I think that probably video camera in the confessional, not on the up and up God wise, but uh But when you're catching you do you, Veronica. the you're you're catching the priest in the act of being a drug dealer. <laughs> That's right. Or, or or sort of uh I don't know, supporting the the trade. Yeah. So we learned in this that Logan is still living in Duncan's hotel room. Which right. Apparently Without the Canes talking. never just went ahead and, you know, checked him out remotely. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, okay. Um, I just, I just, Weevil's got to move in at some point, right? Oh my gosh. They, they got to just be the dynamic duo. Yes. Yeah. Poor Weevil, who was ousted from his leadership of the gang in that episode, right? Because that was the whole thing that they, they found out who was, uh, doing the drugs in the confessional and while, you know, we will presented his gang members with the fact that Thumper, is that Thumper? Thumper is the one who has been betraying them, but they don't see it as a betrayal so much as we will betraying them by not just accepting the fact that Logan killed Felix and shutting up. So, you know, he's beaten up and his bike is thrown in the water and he's out. Right. And also he, Starts a questionable choice of growing out his hair, <laughs> which looks ridiculous. I'm sorry. It's more, uh, it's, you don't see it in this episode. You see it in the next one. Yeah. I I don't care for it. <laughs> yes. He does look good without it. So. Yes. Anyway. So poor Weevil. I, I feel that somehow he will get back on top. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, look forward to the crime fighting duo of Logan and Weevil continuing their rampage. Right, because they haven't you know, Weevil now believes that it was Thumper who yes. killed uh Felix, but it's not like they have any real right. proof of this. There so. is yeah. And apparently Weevil did we know something about Weevil beating up Curly? Curly? Yeah, that's a new thing. He's Curly the guy the who we think man. uh doctored up the bus right. possibly. And then died. So are we thinking that Weevil is the one who killed him and then dumped his body in the ocean after writing Veronica Mars on it in Sharpie? Or no, I mean, I don't think so, but I guess that's what we're meant to question <laughs> Wonder. at this moment. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, I could think that, that I could see Thumper having resentment against Weevil, if only because Weevil had named him Thumper. So... <laughs> Who doles out the gang nicknames? I'm not sure, but that guy got the short stick. Yeah, so. although Weevil, not yeah. exactly a pleasant I guess. image I guess. either. <laughs> <laughs> there was a hat that went around, and uh, you know, some people just just didn't have much to choose from. Our podcast is sponsored today by Best Fiends, the puzzle app that challenges your brain with fun puzzle levels and cute characters. They've got a new rock and roll theme going on now. I like winning the little guitars while I'm playing. The attention to detail is charming. I enjoy the little signs that tell me where my fiends are when they're not playing a particular (laughs) level, like they're out for a walk. Yes. On the level that I'm playing, I can join a team of other players to play against other teams and earn more rewards. I'm at the level now where there are bees. And, well, usually I wouldn't want to be hitting hives and getting the bees to fly out. Here it's cute and fun, just like everything else. Do not try this in real life, though. I am playing so much that I'm on level 926 right now. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Plus, I've done several special side missions, too. That is impressive. Engage your brain with fun puzzles and collect tons of cute characters. Trust me, with over 100 million downloads, this five-star rated mobile puzzle game is a must-play. Download Best Fiends free on the Apple App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R. Best Fiends. Anyway, let's move on to the second episode we watched, Ain't No Magic Mountain High Enough, reminding me of my days riding roller coasters at Magic Mountain, a sort of 
I guess it's a Six Flags now. I'm not sure it was a Six Flags when I was going to school, but it was, you know, in a place where you can get to Disneyland in a couple of hours. It wasn't your top tier amusement park right. selection. So um, I have to say, I mean, it was an interesting episode. I, I There's much I enjoyed about it, but I just call immediate BS that the seniors would raise money for a trip and the amount of money they raised would determine where they go. Mm-hmm. This is how it would be. You can pay X amount of dollars to go wherever the rich kids want to go. If you don't have that money, you can throw fundraisers to pay for it. If you don't make enough, oh well, go with your loser friends to Magic Mountain if you want. Mm -hmm. In no way would the O-Niners choice of senior trip be determined by how much they make at the carnival. Right, because they can just pay for it. 125% do not buy that. Yeah. But, okay. (laughs) <laughs> uh so that's just so i sort of like the entire uh you know concept of this episode is garbage but i at the same time it's also true that none of these kids would be going to public school so <laughs> i suppose there is a there's a suspension of disbelief required from the get-go right and my, this is what my husband says every week none of these kids would be in public <laughs> school <laughs> this is the most ridiculous this is a town with a bunch of rich kids Two gangs. We didn't know about the first gang the first season, but apparently there's been two gangs all along. Right. What? How many people are even in this town? How are there enough people to cover well, all Well, I mean, the Fitzpatrick family alone has 12, 13 they're siblings. Just a, they're just a single family gang. They just got together and said, geez, there's a lot of us. Why don't we deal drugs or something? Yeah. <laughs> it's just so ridiculous. Anyway. Uh, so the, the major storyline of this episode is the carnival in which they're raising money for their senior trip and drinking slushies and throwing frogs and Logan is perpetrating a very disturbing flirtation with a nice looking young woman, uh, and Beaver and Mac are just being adorable, which is disturbing because... (laughs) Beaver is still not a healthy young man. So, Mac, Mac, really? Really? What are you doing, girl? And, you know, but at the same time, Dick is just an incredible, um, his name. Yeah. So, you know, you're sort of rooting for them now, which I don't so much want to be. <laughs> and in the meantime, the horrible, is that now, is that horrible teacher, the same horrible teacher who was you know, so upset to be divorced and whose terrible kid yep. Veronica babysat. It's yep. the same terrible same teacher. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. She is not. Yes. Yeah. Why her, of all the educators we have seen for one episode and never again? Right. She has Why to does come she back get like to stay out times? of detention with <laughs> Jane Lynch? Why, why can we, maybe now that she is like, you know, in disgrace, maybe yes. now she can go to detention and never be seen again. Let's, please, please. Let's oh, please. Because she had the, the, you know, evil dial turned up to 11 this time. Oh, yeah. She just could I not mean, have been worse. Just horrible racism and just plain evil. Rich kids rule, everybody else drools, all of my, you know, a large percentage of my students, I just have nothing but contempt for. Um, oh, honey, <laughs> just please yeah. go away. Well, as they said in, in, I believe they said in the podcast, the Ron Mars Investigations podcast, like, this is someone who really hates being a teacher. <laughs> like, yes. And I mean, try really, something honestly, else. She- I bet there are private schools someplace in California. I bet there are private high schools, even though the parents of Neptune don't seem to know about this. Go teach rich kids. Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. Don't be in a public high school. You know, if this is an episode in in which the principal looks good by comparison, he looks very good. He looks saintly by comparison to this horrible, horrible person. I so... She's collecting all the money, the huge, just, just sackfuls of money, you would think, from all these, these places. Right. And you've, you've worked in volunteer school stuff. Have you ever heard of an event that made the kind of money they're talking about here? 
No, because if I had, we would have been doing that <laughs> instead of everything else we did. <laughs> Hey, anyway, so, and then she gives the cash box to Veronica, and as anybody who's ever watched TV before in their life can predict, Veronica puts it in a little cabinet, she opens the cabinet back up, it's gone! OMG, where did Ooh, it go? Also, were kids still streaking in 2004? <laughs> no, I mean, in I 77, think that stopped at my in 19... high school, kids streaked. I think that stopped in 1975, didn't it? Yeah, I don't think that's still a thing. A good distraction, I guess, but still, no. Mm. Um, anyway, so who done it? What? At one point, they had a video that was supposedly going to have evidence, and then they gathered everybody into who might be guilty into a room like this was some sort of Agatha Christie drama, <laughs> and started showing the video, and then we went back outside where everybody was back outside. Yeah, it was it was very uh, uh, what 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 ha what was that? I just I thought did I miss something or is this flashbacks or was this all on video? What was the point of gathering everybody to watch a video if you never had any resolution from that? Right. It's just this is just weird. And then they're in the shop and then they're in the copy room and it, like yes. they're all over the place. The convolutedness of the eventual solution of this thing was particularly ridiculous. Yes. But Weevil got a new car, so. Yes. Right. Weevil is Robin Hood and he got a new car. <laughs> it's green. The new car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, okay. That was a thing that happened. And poor Jackie is starting to feel what it's like to not be on the top of the heap at Neptune High School. As her dad is accused of having something to do with the bus crash, so immediately everybody is mean to her. And I did very much like the point at which Veronica was saying, you know, it's not worth it to try to fight this. And she pointed out that Veronica kept her head up all through the mm -hmm. stuff with her dad. So bonding. Yep. Badass girls of dads who run afoul of the Neptune elite, you go. Uh, and so she goes to the dunk tank and gets dunked about a million times. Yes, that was so sad. That really was sad. Although it will make her stronger. After she gets mm. over the pneumonia, she will be a hundred times stronger. And now a Veronica ally. Right. And Wallace redeemed himself by conspicuously not hitting her. <laughs> not hitting right. the target. When he threw Even though Wallace, he's, he's which not... Which was adorable. Even though he's yeah, he has girl. a new... A new lady friend named Jane. Yes. Yes. So much dating in this episode. <laughs> oh, we forgot to mention that in the first of these two episodes, uh -huh. we got karaoke and we got Elvis yes. Costello's Veronica, which I had been waiting, been waiting for. Two and a half seasons for Elvis Costello's Veronica. Yes. Uh, it was used in about the only way it could be in which you got about you know, half a verse of it to the point where he sings Veronica because otherwise it is completely not relevant lyrically oh, yeah, to absolutely anything going not. on here. <laughs> and it is, in fact, extremely sad. Yes, it is. Notwithstanding its jaunty melody. So anyway, these these two episodes were kind of a nice respite, don't you think? Mm -hmm. From, you know, a lot of trauma earlier in the season and then the whole Duncan baby kidnapping extravaganza from the that we watched last week to just two nice pitches over the plate procedural high school stuff a little bit of continuing storyline to string you along but probably nothing that's going to cause anybody to be scarred for life possibly dick Possibly the girl that Logan is stringing along for evil purposes. But, you know, he did buy her slushies and give her a bunny and <laughs> cuddle sweetly, you know. Spend some money at her booth. He did. So what's the harm? And it was worth it for the look on the dad's face. <laughs> so, you know, whatever hundreds of dollars he donated to the senior trip cause... Money well spent. Right. 
Well, next week, we will talk about two more episodes of Veronica Mars. We just cannot get enough. Uh, we're going to watch episode 14, Versatile Toppings, and episode 15, The Quick and the Wed. Please let that not to apply to anybody in high school. Anybody we care about. <laughs> and that's going to be it for our round two today. Please subscribe to our Parenting Roundabout podcast so you won't miss any of our episodes. We have something new for you every weekday. As always, you can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. Goodbye, Catherine. Bye, Terry. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye.